Hi everybody, I'm back and today I'm going to be talking about some books that I've read recently and some books that I have planned to read next, hopefully, if I have time. Um, I watch a lot of this type of video on YouTube and I don't get to read as much as the booktubers that I watch, but I thought this might be interesting and a little bit different than another thrift haul or something that I usually do. Um, so let's just get right into it. Most recently, I've read two graphic novels, one regular book of um, fiction, and then also um, a middle grade book with my son. So let's start with the graphic novels. Um, the first one that I read was Zodiac Star Force. Um, Written by Kevin Panetta, illustrated by Paulina. Oh gosh, I don't know how to say this name. Ganu, Ganu Show, Ganu Chow. Um, the reason I ordered this from my local comic book shop, which is Three Alarm Comics, please give them a follow. They're awesome. Is because um, the artist I found her on Instagram, and I just really, really liked her style, and I wanted to learn more about her. And check out some more of her work so I ordered this I mean it looked adorable in the little preview picture so I thought it was worth checking out and it's basically about a um, group of young ladies who fight evil um, I don't want to get too much into it and give too much away but I thought the artwork was really precious um, especially the kind of leader of the group, Emma. Let's see if I can find a good picture of her. She's so cute. And the whole time I was reading this, and this is so my personality, I was like, I wish they would make a doll line out of these because they would look so cute. Especially Emma. She's adorable. Um, the only thing with this book was I felt like there was maybe another story prior to this that I didn't know about and I felt like I missed some things or maybe it just went over my head that's possible as well um, but overall you know it was okay and like I said I really enjoyed the artwork um, there's a, a good bit of diversity I feel like in here and representation so that was nice you know a little bit out of the norm and uh, yeah I gave it three stars you know it was cute it was all right quick read graphic novel so, that was that. And then the second graphic novel I read was uh, Mars Attacks Occupation. And as you can see, I have a signed copy. I also got this one from Three Alarm Comics. Um, you may not know, but I really, really love Mars Attacks. Um, I have one of the action figures. I have the movie. I've loved the movie ever since I was a kid when it came out. Um, I love Tim Burton anyway, but Mars Attacks particularly. I really love especially the style of the Martians um, I feel like in the 90s when we had the alien autopsy and everything that like style of alien has come back into popularity but as far as like illustrated Martians aliens what have you this is I think that's what they should look like there that's just my favorite style I don't know um, but in this graphic novel Mars has attacked and they've taken over and have pretty much enslaved the human race and this young woman here has um, been kind of playing along but she's you know got a resistant personality she ends up in a gladiator type situation where she kind of has to fight for her life um, and without going into too much further detail you know more comes of that and she kind of ends up being like a Katniss type character and an inspiration for a lot of people so that comes into play um i thought this was really interesting it was definitely more engaging than this one um but i prefer the artwork for this one obviously this one is going to have more of a bleak kind of setting so you know it's not going to be cute and flowery like i like things to be but uh still enjoyed it nonetheless great story um so i would recommend this one for sure Nothing too terrible. I mean, it does get a little violent. Um, 
I don't think there's anything I have to warn you about otherwise. Pretty good. Definitely not for younger people, but um, like I said, I enjoyed it. So I'm rambling. Sorry. <laughs> um, the next thing that I read was Sourdough by Robin Sloan. This one's been on my bookshelf for a while. Um, my copy is actually at Extra Library. Bought it um, when we still lived, in, before we moved here. Um, the library had a book section that they kept all the time where books were like a dollar. So I picked it up there based on Natasha's recommendation from My Reading is Odd. I really love her content as a booktuber. I've been following her for I think a couple of years now and everything that she said she's enjoyed I've liked so I do really value her opinion. So I bought this a while back and it's been on my shelf for a while and uh, before I picked this up and decided to read it um, there was I don't know it was weird how do I explain this. Um, Amber Miller from Real Life Millers here on YouTube. I follow her on Instagram as well and she posted something about sourdough and uh, then oh uh, Natasha had posted a video earlier in the day where she was talking about a reading slump and I think she mentioned this book and um, then I saw Amber's post about a sourdough sandwich or something with to do with sourdough bread not the book and then Justin and I watched MasterChef every week and the, I don't know if it was the secret ingredient or the challenge ingredient or whatever, what have you on those cooking shows. Um, it was sourdough and I was like, this is too weird. You know, three times in one day, I don't really care for sourdough bread. So I thought it was really unusual that that came up and I was like, I think I'm going to pick up this book. I think the universe is trying to tell me I need to read sourdough. So. I spent a few weeks reading it because I don't get a lot of time to read, but being pregnant, I go to the doctor a lot, and I had to go to the hospital for a couple of things, so I spent some time there, and that's where I got most of the reading done. Um, this is about a woman who writes code for robotics arms, and um, she encounters this like takeaway deli, these two men that prepare food and deliver it from their home. And she becomes obsessed. Like she eats it every day. And then they have to leave the country because um, they're not citizens. And they leave her their sourdough starter for their bread. So she takes on this big endeavor of caring for the starter and tending to it. And then she ends up becoming a baker herself with the sourdough bread. And it's kind of like her journey transitioning from this, you know, very utilitarian tech environment into something much warmer and more of a um, artisanal kind of role. Um, I really enjoyed it from the entrepreneurial sense and kind of um, self-starting handmade perspective. I really enjoyed that. Um, the story was good and it makes you want to eat a lot of bread and soup <laughs> a whole lot. Um, it's summertime here in South Mississippi, so it's very hot. So that's not really appetizing right now, especially for me being seven months pregnant. But I did want soup and bread the whole time I was reading this. I thought it was good, you know, an upbeat little quick story. Nothing too heavy, nothing too depressing, which is exactly what I need right now. So while it wasn't, you know, entirely enthralling, I did enjoy it. So I would give it three and a half stars, I guess. Um, and I would recommend it. I mean, I tend to read a lot more darker, more serious stuff a lot of the time. So if that's not your thing, you may want to check this out because it's a little bit more light. Um, a little bit more contemporary than like reading a horror book. So that was Sourdough by Robin Sloan. I would definitely check out um, his other book, Mr. Penumbra's 24 Hour Bookstore. I've heard good things about that one as well if I come across it. Most of my books are secondhand. I very seldom go to the bookstore and buy a new book. And even if I do, a lot of times they're on clearance. Um, 
very rarely pay regular price for a book. I'm just cheap. It is what it is. Okay. And lastly, Goosebumps, number one, Welcome to Dead House. If I'm breathing heavy and sniffling a lot, it's because I'm getting sick. So, sorry about that. But I can't help it. It's happening to me. Um, I read this with my son. He is eight. He'll be nine in November. And uh, we just read a chapter a day because his school encourages reading 20 minutes a day. And I thought this would hold his attention, being an eight and a half, almost nine-year-old boy. I know when I was little, everything I read was monsters and ghosts and spooky stuff. And that's all I wanted to read. And I was creepy. And that's totally okay. If that's what your kids are into, encourage it. Because reading anything is better than not reading at all. Unless it's like, you know, Hustler. Don't let your kids read that. Come on now. Use your sense. I'm not telling you how to parent. I don't think anyone should tell anyone else how to parent. It just, uh my personal opinion, I guess. But um, this one, pretty good. We're going to try to read all of them. Um, but we have to kind of go with which ones we both have copies of in our respective collections. So our next one is Night of the Living Dummy. We haven't started it yet, but this one was okay. These uh, kids moved to a creepy old house in a dark town called Dark Falls town is like super shadowy trees overgrown covering everything there's very little sunlight and uh they start seeing stuff in the house weird things are happening the curtains are blowing when the windows are closed you know typical haunted house kind of spooky stuff kids in the town are weird it is you know pretty standard fair haunted house fair i don't know um my son enjoyed it you know, every time we read a chapter, he would give me all his theories. Oh, the people in town are vampires. The people in town are ghosts. So that was fun, you know, to see him get excited and engaged. And um, it doesn't take a lot of time. I would recommend reading the, these with your kids just because um, each chapter is only maybe four or five pages. And I would always have Towns read the first and the last page because it wasn't a full page. And then I would read the middle so that we would move it along pretty quickly um, because we do have quite a bit of homework and stuff to get through in the evenings plus our reading so but um went pretty good you know I liked the ending these tend to have good endings which I like I haven't come across one yet that has like a Rod Serling type ending so hopefully there won't be hopefully they'll be you know wholesome like the are you afraid of the dark stories um, but he seemed to like it. I got to read Goosebumps with my kid. I call that a win. I'm not going to rate this one because it's, you know, a children's book. But, um, like I said, I, I did enjoy it. And I enjoyed having that time with my son. And if you have kids, you know, that aren't too little, I would recommend reading these with them. Because it's a good time, I feel like. So, that was everything I've read recently. This video is getting pretty long, so I'm going to end it here, and then I'm also going to record my TBR and my upcoming reads, just for the sake of time. Um, if you're also a reader, and you feel like sharing something good that you've read recently in the comments, please do so. You know, I'd love to know what you think, and if you've read any of these books, let me know what you thought as well. Please give us a thumbs up. It helps our channel. Also, subscribe if you want to see more content from me and Victoria, and check out the Super Geeked page. I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down and talk about books with me, and I hope that you'll come back soon and that you have a great day. Thank you.